Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to look at how we can create some really elegant uh, sort of vase type elements using a few simple functions in Grasshopper. Alright, let's dive into a new document and I'm going to get rid of this. Alright, so the basis of this is going to be a series of graph mappers. So what I'm going to start with is by dropping down a graph mapper. Alright, so for the graph mapper we need a range component and we also need a slider. I'm going to set this to a maximum value of 100 for now. Uh, we'll see how many points we have, or how many data items we actually need in the end. And I'll maybe set it to 30 for now. I'm going to plug that into my uh, graph mapper. Had a bit of a mind blank there. And I'm going to switch it to Bezier. So now I'm just going to mess around with it a little. And for this uh, definition, we're not going to use your standard uh, construct point. We're going to use a cylindrical point. And so the cylindrical point is basically like a, a point which relies on uh, rotational values instead of uh, Cartesian values. Um, so it asks for starters for, uh, okay, so a plane. Uh, we'll just use our standard world xy plane. Um, an angle, a radius, and an elevation. So my angle, uh, not my angle, my radius is going to come from this graph mapper. But I'm going to use a multiplication component so that we can get some larger values, some more usable values out of it. And I'm going to set this to a maximum of, uh, let's go, 60. That might be a bit overkill, but it's all right, we'll find out. Plug that in. That's our radius. And our elevation is going to come from another range, actually, can come from the same range component which we're just going to use a multiplier for. Um, let's see, I need a multiplication, that's what I need. So we'll plug that into here, and I'll set this to a maximum of 100. So this is my elevation. So we'll plug that into our elevation, and there we go. So now immediately we can uh, we can begin to see the shape of our vase. Maybe I want that to uh, pop out the bottom a touch more, and then sort of level off. Yeah, that's that's looking quite nice. Now I also want some. I want I want this to uh, curve around a little bit, so we can create a bit more of an interesting shape with our vase. And we're going to also do that with a graph mapper. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this output by a value of, okay, so we're going to go 2 times pi times x, x is what's coming out of our graph mapper, times y. And the reason we do times y is so that we can control the uh, the fraction of a full circle that we want this graph mapper to give us. And so we'll plug that into our angle, and you can see if we dial this all the way up to 1, that's going to complete one full rotation, but I'm probably only going to want it somewhere around there. Alright, cool. So we're going to put this through an interpolate curve. There we go. Now what I'm also going to add is um, sort of a displacement parameter. And for this we're going to use a sine summation. And what we are going to do is we're going to multiply... Okay, let's see how this is going to work for starters. Let's try multiplying this sine summation by some factor. I probably only want it to go to maybe 10, a maximum of 10 or so. And then we will 
sum that with our radius, which is this one here. So I'm just going to move this point out of the way and plug those in together. And that should be our new radius. So what this is going to do is it's just going to give me a bit more variation. Um, I'll just hone down this rotation for now just so you can see what's going on. Um, and I'll also increase my sample points to 50, hit enter, and so now using this we can create some real nice sort of finessed detail on the surface of our vase. Um, but, okay, maybe I don't want any anything sort of going on down here because if we look at this curve you'll see it now starts from over here it does not start at the origin so what we need to do is we need to add one more graph mapper and this one okay what we're gonna now do is we're gonna replace this with an expression because I don't like bundling more than one multiplication together um, and this one is going to be x times y times z. And so we have our x value. Wait, let's see, it's this one here. So we're replacing all of these. So this is our x, this is our y, and our z is going to come from here. And then we'll plug that in. And so now we have this curve which starts at the origin and what we can control with this one is basically the amount of sort of the amount of sub detail that's added to this curve and sort of where that detail is added as well using this all right um, the other thing I might want to do is I might want to control how flat my bottom of my vase is going to be and we are going to create another real simple expression for that in order to do that we need to control the elevation which is coming out of this parameter here and so the way we're going to do that is with another slider and so if I'm not mistaken this is going to be x raised to the power of 1 over y times z. And I'll explain this in a sec. So our x value is our range. Our z value is the, uh, how should we say, the, the multiplier for the elevation. And this is going to be our power. And so we plug that in. And so what this enables us to do is control the... Um, I'll just turn the points on so you can see. It's really neat. What it does is it can basically flatten out our bottom by uh, square by um, squaring... or not squaring, raising the, uh, the values to a certain power. So when you raise when you raise a number um, less than one to a power, if you uh, if you raise it to a positive power, it is going to become smaller. And so what we're doing here is we're taking the inverse of this value. So if I were to take this to 0 0.5, if I invert, if I take one over 0 0.5 that gives me 2. So if I'm squaring 0 0.02, I'll just uh, take out my z multiplication so we can see what the result is. If I'm squaring 0 0.02, we get 0 0.0004. And so the further we bring this slider down, the larger power it's being raised to and it slowly, very slowly, flattens out the bottom of our vase, which is really nice. Alright, so that's that's the bulk of the definition created. Now I'm just going to take, I'm going to turn these points off, 
I am going to create a polar array of all of these curves. And I'm going to create a slider for the amount of curves that I want to array. I'll set it to 30, but that might be a bit excessive as usual, but better safe than sorry. So maybe I'll set that to 6 for now. And I'm also going to do another thing. I'm going to bring in a scale component. Um, and in fact, I'll use a scale non-uniform component. So I'm going to plug my curve into my geometry over here. And then I'm going to grab a slider. Uh, 0 to 1 is fine. Plug that into my X and Y, but not my Z, because all I want for this vase is to change the... Um, I guess all the X and well, the X and Y scale, as you might have guessed. I don't want it to shrink in height. And so what we can do is we can also array this in a polar fashion, but not quite, not just yet, because firstly we need to rotate this a certain amount. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create another expression, which is going to be 2 times pi over y. Um, I'm going to put all of that in parentheses, and we're going to multiply it by x. So um, 2 pi over y is going to give us our angle. Actually, let me just, I'll just get rid of the multiply by x for now. And so if we were to just simply rotate this piece of geometry by this angle, you'll see that it'll actually rotate it right to the, uh, or it'll give us a rotation value um, equal to the span. So what we actually want is to take uh, 2 times pi over y over 2. So instead of doing another over 2, we could just remove that. That'll give us the halfway point, point. sorry. Or we could multiply this by 2 pi. And then we could take that over x. And so if we plug in another slider for x, we can control... Ooh, what exactly are we controlling there? times x, sorry, not divided by x, made a bit of a mistake there. Okay, so this will enable us to basically control the amount of angle that this uh, no, this secondary curve is shifted. Alright, so then we're going to array that in a polar fashion. And now we have two polar arrays, and so we could just loft between one of these if we want to get a result, which uh, isn't particularly interesting. Oh, I mean, it's still kind of interesting, but it'd be much more interesting to loft from here to here to here to here and so on. So what we can use is a weave component. Weave is really useful. Remember weave. It takes a pattern, so 0, 1, and it'll weave these data points back together. So it'll take one from here, one from here, the next one from here, the next one from here, until it gets to the end of the list. And so when we plug that into our curves, oh, and not in, yes, into our loft, sorry, it's going to loft through all 12 of these curves. And so now we just need to change our loft options to create a closed loft, commit those changes, and uh, that is our entire definition basically sussed. Now I'm going to preview this off. I'm going to set this to a high quality preview because this isn't a very heavy definition. I'm also going to get rid of these auxiliary multiplications. And now I can start to tweak some of these. So let me bring some more rotation, or actually some rotation into this. Um, 6 is looking a bit low for me, so maybe I will take that up to uh, 16, like, oh no, that is far too much. 
12. Let me scale this up a tiny bit. And there we go. Now we're getting something, something that looks quite nice. Um, let's see. I also want to change my radius because that's looking a bit too much. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, you can also change the or the flatness of this bottom using this slider. Maybe somewhere around there. Okay, so there we go. There is one of my lofts. I'll bake that out. Move it over here. Now I'll make another one. Um, maybe I don't want as much sort of finer detail on there, so I'll wiggle that right back to there. Um, maybe I'll also change the shape of this profile. I want it to sort of dip in a little. Oh, I want it to bulk out and then dip in a little. And I'll take my radius down. Yeah, that's quite nice. And then I'll, uh, I'll increase my rotation. And then I'll bake that out. And uh, maybe I'll just do one more. Let's see, what could we do for this one? Um, hmm. Let's see. Maybe we'll make a real nice narrow one. Something like that. Um, ooh. Maybe I'll f try flattening. Oh, that's a bit too flat. Actually, I could flatten that and then change where exactly this, uh, this patterning is happening. This is starting to lag a bit. Maybe I'll just take this value up a bit. It seemed to lag less. We'll get this right. And then I'll take this down again. Um, I'll also change the amount of rotations that we have in this thing. I'll increase my scale slightly so that it's almost flat. And then I'll bake that one out as well. And you know what? Actually, I'm not liking that as much. Maybe I will give it a touch more variation across the surface. And Grasshopper is just taking a sec. Okay, there we go. I think I like that. Let me bake that out. Yes, I think that is very cool. So there we go. Using this one definition, I have created these three very nice vases. All with just a whole, just a bunch of graph mappers. And knowing how to transform them. Alright, there we go. There's a tutorial on how to create vase geometry.